Yes, Lord. Yes, Subscribe to serving it raw and let's keep it all the way funky, uncut, raw. Serving it raw just like my boy Gutter King. <laughs> yes, Lord. You done tapped into serving the raw podcast. I'm your host, Gutter Kane, the Gutter Man, the Pyrex Iron Chef. And today, I'm excited to welcome this incredible guest. This talented lady is not only a singer and a rap artist. But she's also a songwriter and a producer. She runs her own company, Dice Entertainment, which features a recording studio, nail salon, hair salon, a tattoo and body art facility, along with a professional photography and videography services. But I want to welcome to Serving It Raw, Lady Dice. What's up, Dedicane? Thank you so much for having me. This is dope. Yes, Roy, I'm loving right. this. Look at him go. <laughs> I know. Look, he keeps going around <laughs> my throat. <laughs> Hold on. I'm trying to keep him away from my necklaces. And he just, he's an adventurer. He said, nope. <laughs> but Happy Halloween. I know I got my little, got my little friend with me, Throne. Throne. Yeah, I know, look, he. He's all That's over. so dope. I love snakes. I love reptiles. So how did everything go? For, it was so fun. It was it was probably the most work I've ever put into a show um, because it was a villains themed costume party. And so, of course, we had to come big with our costumes. I think I had five costume changes. Um, it, it was a lot, but it was so much fun. I People came decked out. I didn't know how, you know, it was a little ear earlier in the month. So it was really fun. I didn't know exactly how it was going to turn out. And it ended up being a blast. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, we're going to dive into some of these questions. I have uh, okay. stuff to discuss with you. I want to give you your, uh, we're going to talk about giving you your flowers. So that's going to be something. Uh, we're going to talk about your accomplishments. Uh, you know, basically just let the viewers and listeners get to know Lady Dice, uh, everything Thank that you, you bring into the table musically. Thank you. I appreciate that. All righty. Well, the first thing I like to start with is, is where do you hail from? So where are you from? I'm from Southern California. I was born in Riverside, lived all over Southern California. Um, and then I moved up here to the Pacific Northwest about 13 years ago. Okay. 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 There we go. Yes. So Southern California. All right. All right. Now, I want you to start with, because I'm going to go back. <laughs> I want to go Oh, back. no. Yeah, I want to go back to right before. So before you were doing music, mm -hmm. you were an artist. You mm -hmm. did gra graphite drawings. Yeah, I I still kind of do in, in behind the scenes. But yeah, I love to draw. Okay. And as well, you were a model. Yes, I started Lady Dice, the persona, started as a pinup model. Yep. Um, we used to, I worked for a pinup group that would write to um, soldiers overseas and we'd send them care packages and just do fun little events. And yeah, it just kind of started that way. And I always wanted to do music. I just, I think I was a little scared to dip my toes into it to actually do it. Um, yeah. And just, it just kind of grew. I, I didn't even try or expect it to. Of course, when you don't try, that's when it when it starts going. But yeah, I was I've gone through a lot of phases. I still kind of do all that stuff though, just behind the scenes. Okay. 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 Yeah. Now, how okay, how has your very musical background shaped your distinctive sound and songwriting approach within the uh hip hop gen a genre? You know, when you listen, to, if you listen to like any of my albums. I am put into the hip hop genre. I love hip hop. I rap. I there's a lot, but there's also songs where I completely sing that are acoustic, that are completely different vibes. I always say that my musical influence is across so many genres, right? So I think I bring that into my music now. If you look at this villains EP that I just put out, I it's a hip hop album, but I mean I pulled from my love of Disney, my love of my background, the things I loved growing up, I don't box myself or try and be anything that I'm not. So I take my experiences growing up, being a kid, the influences that I have, and you're not going to hear me talk about things that 
don't apply to my life. I'm going to be talking about things that I can really relate to. So, you know, it's, it comes easy because I don't, I, I pull from everything, everything. Okay. I can, I can, I can see that too. And I like how you did the theme of this one. Cause this is more like a Disney villain <laughs> theme EP. I, yeah. And Wizard of Oz is not Disney, so technically, and for copyright purposes, this has nothing to do with Disney at all. It has only to do with the books. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, got it. Um, but yeah, I I always grew up loving Disney. I actually did a lot of theater. I do acting. I, I wrote a play that I toured. A lot of people don't know that. There's like a lot of different facets to me. And um, yeah, I just kind of decided that I wanted coming into Halloween. So if you're an Oz fan at all, you know that Wicked is coming out next month. And that is a huge deal for anyone that cares about Wizard of Oz. Um, and so I just thought it was the perfect time to let, let's put out these fun songs. Yes, it's aggressive. It's an aggressive EP. I'm coming from the perspective of villains. So duh. Um, and yeah, I decided to just go all out. Like, you know, the video that we just dropped for Brick by Brick. Mm -hmm. I really played on the story that I I drew from. Um you know, which was also kind of scary, changing up a really, really popular story. But I'm sure we'll get into that later. But yeah, it's it's been wild. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now what themes and messages do you strive to express through your empowering tracks? Because you got a lot of empowering tracks, which I'm going to touch on uh, here in a minute. Your next your next one. If you want me to be honest, I think almost every song I make is empowering, even if it's sassy, even the sassiest song that you can hear. You know, even this song's about villains. Yeah, I'm 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 aggressive, but I'm stepping into my own confidence. I'm not letting people affect me. I'm moving forward no matter what. You keep pushing no matter what people do. So I feel like I try to have a message in every single song that I make. Um, and it pulls from a lot of things. I really strive to push for body positivity, for diversity, for for young and I'm not just women, but this is because this is my experience, you know, our younger generation to look at people who are making it, thinking they have to fit a certain stereotype, a certain look, act a certain way, push a certain agenda. So that's really what I'm trying to push. Just like be yourself unapologetically, love yourself, you're freaking badass, even if it's not what society may say is like, I'm weird to a lot of people. A lot of people don't get me, but the people that get me, get me. Yeah. And I'm here for that. You know, your most empowering track would probably be Scars. That's the most important song I've ever written, in my opinion. OK, now, in what ways has the success of that song influenced your career path and your relationship with your audience? It changed everything, man. I get to go to schools and perform for kids and speak to them. I've performed that song and I usually go to continuation schools where kids are getting in trouble and I stay and have lunch with them. I sing to them, talk to them, have Q and A's. And that song, I have received messages from all over the world saying I have saved their life with that song. So I'm, to me, I'm like, I've made it. Like, that's it. That's it to me. The money, anything else on top of that is amazing. But this to me is what it's about. Um, and yeah, that song changed my life. It really, really drove, because I put that song out when I was a really young artist. Mm -hmm. And I kind of was trying to find my sound and, you know, thinking I kind of had to fit certain personas. And I realized, like, that was the first song I wrote 100% from here. And that was the first song that people just, like, latched. And I started seeing how you can heal people with music. And yeah, so it changed everything. Um, it changed everything. You remember that song uh, by TLC, uh, Unpretty? Yeah, I love that song. <laughs> yes. Those two songs. I used like, to like cry and sing that song when I was young. That's exactly the shit I'm talking about. Okay. When I heard that song, I listened to your song Scars and uh in the car driving, and I was like, damn, like I haven't had that type of emotional feeling when it came to a song since hearing that song back then in the 90s. And I was just like, damn. Like she... that's a huge compliment because that song really did affect me. That was like, there are certain songs and certain groups that that was my, you know, growing up era. That was definitely, they were a huge influence on me. So, and that did, song no, specifically. Did you run into, so I saw a picture. Where, uh oh, just kidding. It, <laughs> it wasn't it was, me. Well, it was, <laughs> it was an older picture next to your okay. new picture. And the older picture 
you might have had a sense of depression. The oh, my glow up? Yeah, but then, yeah, but then the picture to the right was more of a, a glow. Yes. So, based off of me seeing that picture, as well as the song Scars, did you did you deal with, like, bullying and, and, and that type yeah, of thing? Yeah. You know, I did. That's not necessarily why I wrote Scars, but okay. I feel like anything that you hear in my songs that I talk about, I'm not necessarily the best if someone sits down and they're like, tell me what I should do. Give me advice. Like, I don't always know the right things to say, but I feel like I'm able to do that in my music because I do feel that way a lot. I, there's moments when I have been in severe depression, when I have felt suicidal, when I have felt a lot of these things. And you think I do remember back to certain songs like Unpretty, all these some people would hear that song and not think anything of it. They just click. It's not their vibe. But some little girls cry in the bathroom when they listen to it, like and it helps them. It makes them feel like not alone. So I don't know. It's just. I try. I just want to do that for other people. That's what's up. You got a big heart. It's yeah, it's painful. A lot of times it's a blessing and a curse, but it's. We got to be here to do it. You know what I mean? Okay. How do your collaboration with other artists, like those on your debut album, Beast, amplify the overall impact of your music? I just love, like, I love working with other artists in general. They're always going to think of something you didn't think of. I am such a, like, people always ask me, what genre are you? And I'm like, yes. I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little bit of everything. So I find myself working with artists that are all so different. And it's just so cool. One of my latest, my latest features was VZ. And I know you had him, you had him on here, right? I've had VZ on here. Have you ever had VZ? <laughs> yeah. I've had him on such... here. Yeah, I did an interview and then I had him on here as a guest. Yeah, exactly. So he, I love VZ. He is so talented. That man is such a well-rounded artist. Like, I, I'll sit here and I'll, he'll play his music for me and I'm like, I need to get to fucking work. Let's go. Like, I need to do something because he is just, he is that. He is so, you'll listen to one song and he sounds like this and the next song you're like, wait a minute, this is the same guy. Yeah, so I just really, I'm kind of picky about my features. You'll see I don't have many. So I am I am picky about who I work with. Like, you got to inspire me. I want to, I want you to make me feel like I need to get up and go right after I hang out with you. Well, I'm going to tell you the same thing I told him. I think y'all should do a duo or at least a collaboration. Like, a, uh, like either, an EP or something? Either an EP together or an actual duo, like a group. That would be cool. I, You know, I actually never even thought about that. Yeah. We have like, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this. I won't say the names, but we have like five songs recorded together already. He's going to be start dropping them and they're so good. They're yeah, so I good. Beezy brings a whole different artist out of me, by the way. I always say, because he writes like nasty shit. And then he's like, you want to get on this? And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I got to match that energy. <laughs> but y'all both, <laughs> look, y'all killed the last dance song. Yeah, but see that I led that. That was that was the song that I already had on this weird beat. And I'm like, Beezy, throw a verse on it. So then he sends me songs that he's written. And if you listen to Beezy's music... He get, he's just, he's a different kind of artist than me, but it's been great because he pulls a whole different side of me out and I love it. I love it. These songs that are going to come out here soon are fire, fire, fire. Some of my favorite songs I've ever featured on. Okay. I can't wait to hear that shit because like I said, like y'all two. And they're all different vibes. All of them. Happy Halloween. Okay. Happy Halloween. <laughs> now, uh, so now what obstacles have you encountered? Because did you shift from doing like classic rock, punk rock, and metal to hip hop, or you were just familiar with all those genres? So like when I started young, I grew up, my dad listened to a lot of like oldies and Motown, and my mom listened to like classic rock and the Beatles and things like that. So that's like my younger influence. And as I got older, there was like metal, punk, hip hop, but it was not what I thought was gonna be my journey. That's, you know, I've always listened to it, always liked it, but I didn't, I didn't know I could rap. I didn't know, like, it's not like I was a little kid trying to learn how to do it. I knew I was going to be a performer. I always knew I was going to be a singer. Always, I've always had a wide variety of genres I listened to. Um, I just didn't, I wanted to do, be in a metal band. I loved the idea of, I just have a pretty voice. I'm, I'm, 
it just wasn't for me. And I remember I had a buddy who was, he was a rapper and he was like, yeah, yeah, I know you can sing. I like, I sing karaoke. I think I sang karaoke in front of him once. And he's like, you should just feature on this song. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. We did two songs together and I had a fan base and that is literally how it started. So I just kind of fell into it again, always loved it, always listened to it, just Mm -hmm. never saw it for myself. And it just happens. When I was young, I still have such a, I I love it though. Like there's like, there's riffs and things from these classic rock songs that I now put into hip hop. Like I use, I utilize the things that, I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with Evanescence, like Evanescence, there's a group that, and Amy Leeds, she's a singer. I take like riffs from this beautiful singing music that I'll use in hooks for songs that I rap. Like, do you know what I mean? But hip hop, like when I'm driving around, it is, it's either oldies or hip hop. That's no, pretty much, and well, it's so like crazy. The- it's shit that is not relevant to my life. <laughs> we drive but- around, listen to like Young Dolph and Key Glock and Money Bag Yo on my way to Target. <laughs> you know, <laughs> look, that's what makes you such a superstar, though, is the fact that you combine bo- both of them. See, <clears throat> Pacific Northwest had um uh, a hip hop sound, you know, with Sir Mix a lot, but then Nirvana overshadowed that. Okay, and I've always said this, that if the Northwest really wants to create a sound for its area, they have to find some type of way to mix in rock. The grunge. Uh, the grunge, yeah, with hip hop. That's really smart. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I feel like you're the only artist that I can really see that's actually doing that. And I just feel Thank like you. that's probably why your fan base, that's one of the reasons, obviously, uh, your personality and other things that come with it, your songs and and stuff like that. But I could I could just tell like that's something that they can resonate with both because it's something different to them. And I see that like you can go through my comments or on my lives and you're like, holy shit, these people are all so random. We have this, you know, old lady from over here who's like, she's like, I'm 70 and I only listen to country, but I love your music. And then we have like you look out into the crowd. It is the biggest melting pot of people. And I really try to drive that home in my shows too. like at the end of the day, we are in this together, whether we like each other or not. Like, that's why I love seeing the audiences the way they are, because I want everyone to hear what I have to say. And at the end of the day, this divide and conquer shit is really working. And I think that I'm just trying, if if I can, even a little bit with my music, just bring people together. And because at the end of the day, if we could strip down all the titles and everything and sat down and just had conversations, we'd probably agree on a whole lot more than people realize. But, I can see that. Yeah. So I do, though, because it, I do think that I, if you listen to an album, if you don't, you're not a huge fan of rap. You, there's a song here that you might like if you're not really into you know just acoustic and you're only like, i think that there's something for everyone i guess is what i'm trying to say in my music yeah it is and like i said like you're able to touch on it from different angles and like i said you have a hell of a fan base i am not gonna lie like I love I, my like you put up on facebook to follow the serving raw page and um yeah i got like i don't know like 10 plus like followers just from that. You know what I'm saying? Good job guys. Yeah. Just from that post. And I was like, damn, I'm like, okay, they really love her. All right. Fan base. You heard it. That's a challenge. I need you guys to all go follow them right now and show them how we, how we really do it. Okay. Go do it right now. Okay. Sorry. Continue. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, I'm glad we actually brought this up because that's, that's actually going to be the next thing I was wondering is, is how (laughs) crucial is social media in your rise of prominence? Because, like, what type of tactics do you employ to, you know, effectively connect with your fan base? My God, people always ask me this, and it's just, like, probably the most annoying answer ever. I love my fans so much, and that's why I stay and ha- I, mean, I have to do social media. That's the way that I connect with them. I do find, though, that I get so stuck in the moment. I'm not always on there as much as I, I should be. So when I do get on, I try really hard to interact with my fans. Like, they get me. I feel like my fans really get me. They know I'm a mom. They know I am have businesses. I have a nonprofit. I, tour, I do all this stuff. But, yeah, social media, I also I have a love-hate relationship with it because I also see what it's doing to, like, the mental health of our youth and um, it's changed so much. And I can tell it what it does to me. 
you know, sometimes I'll be so excited about something, ready to put some something out, and then I don't get the response that I thought. And all of a sudden now I'm feeling different about what I just put out when in reality that had that shouldn't even, you know, and I feel like that really does that for everybody. You put a picture up and you're instantly just waiting to see what kind of approval you get versus I love this picture. I want to put it up. Um, so it is hard for me. I have a, I definitely struggle with it. I think it pulls me from work. It pulls me from the, but it is my only connection personally to my fans. So I do my best to, to stay on and do it. And, but at the end of the day, I have to also realize if it weren't for the internet, if it weren't for social media, I would not be doing this. Sugar Boom Boom, the song that I am known for, I was featured on DL Downer's song, Sugar Boom Boom, has close to 100 million views across the collective platforms. It virals at least once a year in a different country. So it, I think it's with anything in life, there's good and bad. It can be used for good, used for bad. I've just kind of see, been seeing a lot more of the bad, you know, since probably the pandemic on. It's just been a lot. But Again, the good side, it is my connection to the people, my fans, I love and appreciate. So here I am. Okay. Okay. How did you hook up with Lions Den, though, in that situation? Like, I love all of my people over there in Bremerton. I just cannot even tell you. They're just, they inspire me so much. I just love all of them. So Doc Blackwell, who runs Lions Den, the man, um, I had been friends with Doc for years on Facebook. I think still back when I was with still touring with Downer, Sugar Boom Boom days. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of have always supported each other. He's such a hustler. He does such amazing things with, with you know, the resources he has. He doesn't just do music. He has the nonprofit. He has all, all these things that I care about. So for me, that was crazy to see like, wait, you're involved in music, but you actually take this and use it towards good, towards helping your community, helping people, helping so that was, I was like, man, I love that. So we just kind of loved on what we were doing for a long time. And then he was working with an artist on his label and he hit me up one day and he was like, hey, there's this song. I want you to listen to it. We would love for you to feature on it. And I remember being like, oh God, because I liked, I really appreciated him. I'm like, Shh. I turned down features left and right because I just, please be good, please be good, please be good. <laughs> so I go and I listen to it and it was so fire. I did Elevate with Jordy Sam. And yep. I still, to this day, I love that song so much. And it's just kind of been history ever ever since then. Um, he brought me out to do a show there, The Slippery Pig. And I, yeah, just ever since then, it's been, we do everything together. VZ, Doc, me. It's It's been a really, really, really amazing ride. It's been a couple of years now. I think his first time he came to a show out here was in 2019. And we got a picture and I just got another one from the other night. I'll have to show you them. But yeah, it's just, he's an incredible man and he cares about the right things. And so it makes it really, really easy to want to support him, want to attach myself to him, help grow what he's doing in any way. It Every time I go there, there's something life-changing that happens. So, Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, Doc is a hustler and shit. Um, a phenomenal hustler. The biggest hustler <laughs> I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when he told me about you, uh, it was it was the same situation because he said that he was attracted to to your your hustle, you know. And and I was like, and then when he told me that you had Dice Entertainment and that you had the building, and and then he was like, yeah, man, she had a tattoo spot in there, she had a nail salon and a hair salon and a recorder studio and shit. And I was like, all in the same building. He was like, yeah. And I was like, okay. Yeah, I've done, I've done, or I did and changed a lot with that building. That building went through so many different phases of things. And now it's a complete tattoo shop. There's eight tattoo artists in there. I have the studio somewhere else. I'm getting, like, there's, there's a whole lot that is going to be changing and I can't say a whole lot about it, but um, big, big changes are going to be coming in, in my life here. Some good, good things, growing things, expanding things. But, now, do you uh, have Dice Entertainment in, in Oregon or is it in Washington? So Dice ENT is mm -hmm. kind of like the umbrella of everything. Dice ENT was in charge of Dice Inc., which is a tattoo shop. Lady Dice, LLC, it kind of was the hub for all of it. When I first opened that shop, we'd have the hair nails tattoos and all of that it just kind of has progressively changed um i wish that i could tell you more about my future plans we're gonna have to come back on and do this again when i'm allowed to okay i don't want to be so cryptic um but yeah a lot of really of really cool things going on in in that avenue of my life that we're going to be talking about very soon okay okay i hate to be so cryptic but no 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 I, it's, it's understandable because there are certain things that's going to start rolling out for a lot of artists 
And I know a lot of time they they it's like hey, it's a a a certain time that they can really present that stuff. You know, I know you're like, but I, there's something happening. I swear. <laughs> And we are back. Uh, okay, now this is my favorite topic. What is your top five favorite rappers, dead or alive? And for the women, I allow you to do either five women or and five men, or you can do you can mix them up. It's on you. It's a courtesy. So you can do it however you like. 
I don't know why I didn't think about you asking this question because I'm going to, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you my top that I'm listening to right now. Okay. Cause I, yeah, the, it, it, that's what it would be. Your, it's your so top hard. Time. Yeah. To choose of all freaking time. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have you do that. Okay. So I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of Joyner Lucas. I love, love, love Joyner Lucas. Okay. okay. I love him. Um, most of the, I have really, like I told you earlier, Moneybag Yo, Key okay. Glock, Young Dolph, like that is the shit I'm on right now. Um, but there is a lot more like, I mean, there's a lot of really influential rappers that are a lot more influential than them. And I do know that, but that is definitely my vibe lately. And then there's sometimes it's just like straight R&B. And then women, like I love Nikki. I love Cardi. I love everything they're doing. You know what I mean? It's so hard for me to say like, What's what's the best? It's it's so it's like saying what's the, your favorite fruit? I love so much fruit. You know, I think that there really is. And again, this isn't like the most heartfelt reason, but like what Cardi and Nikki and all these women are doing in rap right now is so freaking important. A, a lot of men, it shakes them up a little bit because they're doing the same shit that men have been doing forever. If you listen to E40, you listen to Too Short. They've been doing this shit. Yeah. It's because they're women. And um. I think that, that even though people get offended maybe by their message, I see what they're doing. And I think it's a big thing, a big step for women. And so for that, for that reason, I do. I think the women in hip hop glow, all the the ones that really are shake shaking people up, it's like, why? They're just expressing things as women that men have been expressing in this genre forever. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just a sign of growth. So I I really am just loving that whole vibe and out of those i i can't decide if i like nikki or cardi more i hate having to decide but um i kind of think i'm going with cardi actually i like cardi's personality she's important i think to, uh, again she's a character i know that she's a lot but so are so many people so many people are just like her that are feel like they either can't express themselves they're not represented she is and you know me and doc talk about this with sexy red even she is representing a group of people that it's like it's important that everyone is represented and the things she's saying like a lot of people feel that way and watching these women come up keep pissing people off man keep doing it because it means we're doing something right i think we're i think we're moving fast women in hip-hop is are going crazy right now oh yeah it's our time going crazy it's our time I don't know if I really answered your question or if that was just a very roundabout well, way of answering <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm not sure. you, gave, you gave me four. I'll more. give you my fifth. And it's going to sound kind of like, oh, okay, everyone says this, but like my, my reasoning. So obviously we all know Tupac is so influential, right? Yes. So I, I didn't, I knew of Tupac when I was young, but it was like not something I super understood until I started getting older. And I'm finding like, even now he, as an artist, his music, it almost, I mean, to me, because I wasn't really around back then knowing what he was going through, like, it is so relevant to everything that is going on now. His music is so timeless and it connects to, it's like almost like he was, could see into the future. Like, he was just such an incredible, incredible artist. And the way his, you could show a, a kid his music now and it's just like they're hearing a whole new, it, it's so relevant. It doesn't sound like it's, he's talking about things back when he wrote it. And I just think there's something amazing about artists who can have music like that. It's absolutely timeless. His music will never die. And I feel like as society changes, as everything changes, like it still goes with everything. And that's, that's like, to me, the sign of a, a true artist. Like okay. it's, it's incredible to me. So should I put two pockets at five? Yeah. Okay. Put in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. What type of insights can you, can you give like new artists? Like new musicians, uh, like what type of insight can they uh, gain from your journey in music? I think that really realizing like why you're doing what you're doing is really important. You know, if you're just doing it for fame or you're just doing it for this, that, you know, I can't really help you there. I don't know what that's about, but you have to know what you're in for in this for. Um I had the chance to go sit at, in, in New York in Rock Nation. I had to sit down with the label um, and I walked away from that meeting cured of ever wanting that level of fame. We can get into that someday. Um, yeah, what happened? <laughs> it's just 
No. You really realize that if you're going to get that level of fame, the machine, as they call it, you have to change a lot about yourself. You're going to be, you're, you know, the questions they were asking me really, really made me understood. No, no shade to Rock Nation. You guys do your thing. It's just, you know, it really made me realize, you know, because we talk about having so many different lanes, right? Yeah. One of the first things they said, they were like, well, in this song, you're almost giving like a Cardi Nikki vibe. In this song, it's almost like country. We need to pick a vibe. We need to pick a lane. And I'm like, no, you know, like that doesn't make sense to me. And he's like, but no one's really doing this. I said, say that again, slow. Nobody. Like I... Like, say that one more time slow and make it make sense to me. So when we left, it was cool, though, like, mad respect to the person who I spoke with. He's he's pretty well known. I'm not going to say his name, but we, we're still cool. Um, but, yeah, they used the example of, like, Katy Perry. They were like, you know, when Katy Perry came to us, she was this Christian singer and da da, da And look at what we made her. I said, this is exactly what I, like, she, whether I'm a Christian, like Christian music or not, like, that is what she does. That's what she, and they complete, I mean, she came out with I Kissed a Girl was her first song. Yeah. They completely changed everything about her. You know, they asked me, how do you feel about people writing your music? How do you feel? You know, all these crazy things that I'm just like, that's my artistry. I would rather be completely independent. I still have people writing me, telling me I've saved their life all over the world. I can keep my masters. I own all my own shit. I, you know, I think that just really knowing that this isn't the 90s, 2000s, you do not need a label. Independent is the way to go. Get you a good team that believes in you. Get Surround yourself with a bunch of hustlers because you will not mess up quicker than surrounding yourself with people that are not ready to work. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do it yourself. We have social media at our hands. We're able to edit our own videos. Edit, I mean, not saying you shouldn't still utilize artists for this, but I'm just saying like, we can do so much now. You don't need a label to give you a check when now we know it's just a freaking loan with high interest. They're giving artists signing bonuses and they think they can go buy houses and cars. And no, that's to put, you're supposed to be paying for your music videos, paying for your, you're paying all that money back with interest. So then these artists get stuck in these deals. Um, then they get, and they get shelved, can't do anything with their music. I just really want people to know you can do it yourself. You do not need to change yourself for anybody. And literally, you just have to be ready to work. And a lot of people want this without understanding what goes into it. And it is it is work, work, work. Okay. So you like the in, the freedom that you get from being independent compared well, to- Well, that and <laughs> more like the freedom of realizing what you have in you. Because I thought growing up, again, I thought you had to get discovered. You have to get signed. And back in the day, it kind of was like that. But now, like, if you hustle and you know, you learn how to play the game, you can do it on your own. I mean, Tech 9 is a huge, a, a very good way of showing that. Snow the Product, another amazing example of that. They all do all this on their own and they're going crazy and they get to retain their artistry. They get to be, they get creative freedom. Um, yeah, so, and the one thing, I, I actually was just talking to Frankie, he's part of Lion's Den too. He came up to Ben to perform this at this last show he's incredible too i was just trying to talk i said i remember when i went to new york and someone asked me he goes all right what's what's if you could imagine the biggest show you've made it what is what is your biggest show i said madison square garden they said what does it look like and i start describing the show to him and he goes okay he goes so why aren't you trying to do that and i'm like what do you mean he goes you told me you want visuals why aren't you getting a tv screen you said you want dancers do you not know people that you could teach to dance? And it hit me. He was like, you should be trying to be the artist you want to be right now. And so I remember thinking like, I like the over the like Lady Gaga type over the top sets. So maybe I can't do that right now, but you're going to see at the show, we have huge paper mache mushrooms we made for it. We have the screen. I got dancers. I, I may not be able to be doing it like, Beyonce getting ready for Beachella, Coachella. I watched that documentary and it changed everything. That's why I got a goon squad because of that documentary. Um, my girls shout who tour with me. Yep, like shout out to, shout the, out to the goon squad. Oh my God. <laughs> I love them so freaking much. I love them so much. But yeah, so that's my, and it, and it just, it changed my brain chemistry forever. Cause I'm like, why am I not trying? So that's why you look at my shows. I have visuals every time. I have dancers every time. We have costume changes. Cause that's, it may be a smaller version of what I imagine, but it's what I'm working. I'm actively working towards my dream, not just something that like a, 
I'm, it may be way up here, but I'm striving for it all the way down here. And it really, and people always say, I never see artists that put this amount of effort into their shows. I mean, it's, I think people just don't realize because it took someone saying that to me, like, you know, you can do that, right? You know, you want dancers, go hit up the college, go hit up some, you want, a, you know, someone to come, go hit up video videographers and photographers that are in school still. You, you, you know, there's a lot of options, but it is, it's a hustle. You have to get up and you have to go and do it but you can. And so that's really what I want people to think about. Are you actually striving to be your end goal? You may not be that overnight, but are you doing everything that you can to step your way up there? Don't wait for a label to do that for you. Don't wait for anyone to do that for you. Cause as of now, these days, they want proof of brand. They want to see what you're doing works. Um, don't wait for someone to come and find you. Do it. Hustle. Do what you got to do because it, it's honestly, we have so much more power than any, they, than it seems. Yes, we may not get the machine, but I don't know that we want the machine, y'all. That's, that's a, I don't know that we want the machine. <laughs> I like your professionalism, I, I, uh, especially when it comes to your performances. Uh, you Thank have you. A, a level when it comes, uh, so that's professional that when I watch uh, other up and coming, uh, especially like local artists and stuff like that, but the stage presence is not the most professional. And I th and people have an issue with that. It's like, uh, if you, like if you're rapping and somebody else is feeling your song that you know, and they just jump on stage with you, to you, as a rapper, you may feel like, oh, that's my partner. Like I know him and 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 he's vibing to my song, but from the crowd, it doesn't look, it just looks unprofessional. So well, not only that, but they're paying to come see you. A lot of these people are so excited. I mean, you just have, I don't know. I I feel like there's so many levels of respect that come with shows. When a, when a performer performs over their vocals, I feel like that is the biggest slap in the face to the audience ever. I, I always tell everyone, uh -huh. uh, so, right? So the way, the perspective I give, I'm like, imagine you go to watch someone do a live painting, right? You're sitting there and they turn the canvas around and it's fucking on there. That's what you're doing to the audience. It's already painted on there. What are they there for? Yes. You will see me sweat. You're going to see me. I mean, I sing, I dance, I do my hooks, I do everything and i eat tacos you know so a bitch is out here working <laughs> so when I, that's i just feel like you have to show respect people travel to come see you they're coming to see a live show put time and effort into it like and then i and why i i mean it's just reinforced every single show when i get off and there's just like this person crying this is my first show this was so amazing i literally know they're gonna remember me for the rest of their life period and that is so huge to me. I, I I don't know. I just care a lot. I care a lot about people. I think music is just a tool for me to connect with them. It's something I was blessed with. Um, but it's just a part of it. Yeah. See, people before when they used to bounce out your track and they do a performance track, it used to be they would keep your chorus in there and you add. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Chorus and backups. Yeah. Your punches. Yeah. That's it. That's what Nobody I do. Else was, was straight Cause they're like, well, like, what if I lose my place? Then you better know your punches. Cause when you hit your punch, you jump back in. Like, and then artists don't realize, listen up artists. When you have a backing track, you know, when you're in your car, this is a good example. You're in your car and you're singing to the music. Da, 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 da. It is giving you the safety net where you think you sound good. And there was an artist recently, I was just loving their performance and their, their the music went off and you could only hear him singing. And he sings amazing, but he had a backing track and he was really loosely singing to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it takes away everything that is beautiful about your voice. So I don't know, I there it, people would much rather you hit a wrong key, let your voice crack, be out of breath, Give them a live experience. And it's way cooler for you, too. I promise. Oh, yeah. And everyone notices. We notice. I, look, we all notice. I agree. A hundred percent. And for <laughs> artists that think they're like, oh, man, I don't want to mess up and shit. I've seen Tupac mess up during a performance. where he That's was, what makes it beautiful. Yeah. yeah. He was rapping uh, Shed So Many Tears. And he finished rapping the first verse. And he got ready to rap the second one. But, you know, the cadence is similar 
he started rapping the first verse again. He just stopped the song and went to his next one. Like, And here you are how many years later still talking about that because that is a real ass moment. That is something yeah. that that audience got that no one has ever gotten. And that's what I really want people to realize. Like these shows is your your time to intimately connect with your fans. You're going to have people that have never seen you before. I get so many new fans. I love festivals, car shows, things like that, because it's always random people that don't know who I am. And that's your chance to just latch on to all these people and let you, you get to latch on to the, I don't know. It's just a really missed opportunity. And it just, it's very unprofessional. People, It looks like you just don't care. You have had some performances where you, uh, like, uh, you had, uh, like, established artists like Tyga. Mm-hmm. And Evan. And so mm -hmm. how, how is performing alongside those type of artists enhance your artistic growth? Um, so for Tyga, that was a, that was a huge opportunity for me. I found out like the night before I was performing, they were like, do you want to open up for Tyga? I was like, what? Yes, I do. I, I mean, I, I can't even remember how many years ago that was, but I still have people that write me about that show. I gained so many fans. And that's the thing you need to realize, like every show you have is an opportunity for you to not, you know, gain fans, but to spread your message, whatever that is. I mean, and if you're not proud of your message and don't care, then that's one thing. But like for me, that's everything for me. Devin the Dude was dope. I actually smoked the, his first ever week. I brought a cross joint. And smoked with him it was his first time ever smoking. I have a video. I'll try and get it to you. Yeah, no, of us Devin, smoking Devin together. Devin is down there. Devin is. He is so cool. Um, the Loonies. I got to perform with them. They actually asked me if I would perform. I got five on it with them. So I actually got to perform it and sing the hook. Oh shit! That was one. That was one of the coolest moments in my career. I was so so cool. Yeah, I got to tour with DL Downer. I got to do. I've got to do a lot. B Baby Bash. Um. Yeah, I've I've really got. And that's all just so many different genres, so many different walks of life, I should say. Um, yeah, I it's it's just incredible every time. I still have I've been doing this for over 10 years and I'm not used to any of this still. The the fans, the love, I'm blown away. Like when I do my lives and people are like, I'm watching from Scotland, I'm watching from da 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 da. -da. I'm, it just blows my mind still. I'm not used to it at all. I hope I'm never used to it. No, you, look, you got a, a your persona is like so fucking off the charts. Like you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the best way I can explain it. It's like it's just so it's gravitational. Thanks. Yeah, yeah your personality is is, is is really like that. Like even when I see your lives myself, you know. Um, which speaking of a villain, because that was the last live I saw where you were actually going through you were talking about the release but what inspired the idea behind your new ep like what inspired villain what made you come up with that like okay I'm, you know because you did beast you've been putting out singles now villain um so i actually have a whole album done already we're just strategically putting things out um but this this villains ep you know the last couple years i've gone through a really big transition with Friends, work, you know, just a lot of things and really calling it your villain era sounds corny, but there's like a point in time when you have to just stop caring about what people think about you and step into yourself and stop caring and just do what you got to do to get where you got to go. Um, <laughs> so I, the video for Brick by Brick, it just kind of shows like the girls talking about me in the beginning, painting me as this green horrible witch and i'm just like me right and as time goes on i'm like you know what you want to paint me as a witch that's exactly what the fuck i'm going to be then and that's kind of what that that song is but at the end i get what i want and i throw my hat off i don't need to be the witch anymore you know so sometimes you know i tried to pose the question one the villains that we know and love are they only a villain because we heard it from the perspective we heard it from um are you not a villain to somebody, to some in someone else's perspective? Are we not all a villain? Um, and what does it take to push someone into their so-called this so-called villain stage? So, I took a few different perspectives for um, one, like the Maleficent song. It has to do with relationships. If you follow the story of Maleficent, they did her villain story, and you know her heart was broken. So one of the songs is 
like a heartbreak song from her from and I'm using the perspective of her. Another one is Alice in Wonderland. I'm coming from the perspective of the Red Queen and Queen of Hearts while applying it to things that have happened in real life for me. And it's not just one specific person or one specific group, but I do like to tell anyone they're like, who's the white rabbit? Who are you talking about in Brick by Brick? And I said, whoever watches these videos and hears these songs and says, damn, is she talking about me? Yes. Y'all heard it here. <laughs> she was talking about y'all answers. Yes. If you are wondering, then it, the answer is most likely yes. I love it. That was a good concept. <laughs> it was a release. I, I try really hard to stay positive and be bubbly and happy. You know, but I'm also human and there definitely is a whole other side for sure. Um, and sometimes music is my is my outlet. So I kind of had a few aggressive songs in a row and I'm like, ooh, let's let's make this something. And again, I'm kind of a, I was into theater. I was really into Disney and all those things when I was young. So I just thought it was a really cool way to present this aggressive era that I was going through. Okay, <laughs> It was a release for me. Do, now, do you have a name for the? The actual album? Or can it's you... Villains. Oh, the actual album. The album. No, yeah, not the EP, the album. You said you have an album. I'm thing. going back and forth between two, and I can't tell you. But I will tell you, it's like, it's 16 songs. 16 so it's... songs. Okay. Damn, she can't give us a name, y'all. But Okay, do you have a name for it? Even though you can't tell me. Do you? Okay, I'm going to tell you the name I think it's going to be. Okay, this is not like a for sure, but this is what I have been stuck on. I kind of want to call it multiplicity because it comes from every song. Again, so many different, it's mixed genres, mixed perspectives. It's There's no like cohesive, this whole album sound like how Villains is all kind of very much in its own realm. Yeah. That's not what this is. And then the second choice was Decade because this is actually a decade's worth of music that I am finishing. So this is like from music from the beginning of Lady Dice mm -hmm. until now. So what do you think? Decade or multiplicity? What do you think? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Mm. Maybe we'll let people answer in the comments what they yeah. think too. Because, yeah, those are my two. I've been going back and forth with those, so I'm pretty positive it'll be one of those two. See, decade, decade is kind of hard, though, because it's like, what? Decade? Like, this is a decade's worth of shit. But then multiplicity, because it is. It's like, I look like I have multiple personalities on this bitch, because every song is different. I will probably go with I mean, obviously different, but... Huh? I would go with multiplicity. Only because... That was the first one I was thinking... Yep. Decade would probably be more of a personal thing to you because like you would know the meaning behind it. But and other people think, wouldn't. Yeah, but everybody wouldn't necessarily know the meaning behind it. You're right. Yeah, You're yeah, right. But, but uh yeah. Got a cane. Did you just name my album? Hey, hey shit. I hope I did. <laughs> I've been trying to look, I've been trying to put some stuff out there for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right stuff. though. I think you're right, though. Yeah. I could go with you're that. Right. Yeah, I could see that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> be, yeah, I think that would be a good one. Now, with your increase in popularity, what potential paths do you foresee for your music career in the coming years? So where do you see? I want to get out of the country. I want to get out of the country. I'm pushing for Australia this next year sometime. I want to start... Because the thing is, is I have fans everywhere. And it's not like I've hit everywhere in the U.S., but there's a different kind of love outside of the country, too. They, It's just kind of different. I, Sugar Boom Boom, I remember getting sent a video from Australia at their PBR bull riding. A bull riding, like their, their nationals that I don't, I don't know about bull riding. Clowns used Sugar Boom Boom in the arena. <laughs> so, like, someone sent me a video of, like, the clowns running away, and it was to Sugar Boom Boom, and I'm just like, I found out I had a song in a Hallmark movie. Didn't know about that. So, like, it's just kind of crazy. So, Sugar Boom Boom is the story. D.L. Downer spent 10 years in prison, and it's the story of how he got there. He had a heroin addiction, and it shows what he went through. So, in the song and in the video, because I wrote the treatment for the video, if you watch it, um, there I play, I actually am heroin. So, I'm represented as a woman, 
But if you pay attention to the song, um, I'm actually the drug. So yeah, you'll ha you'll have to go look at it and watch it. Um, that song that song changed my life. So shout out to DL DL, DL Downer for letting me be a part of it because that song it has I get recognized everywhere. I go, Sugar Boom Boom Girl, like it'll never die. I will be Sugar Boom Boom Girl forever. And now, are you, now do y'all two still collaborate? We don't collaborate. He's in California kind of doing his thing. He's been like racing cars and doing all sorts of stuff. We're still friends. He'll still send me music every once in a while. And like, we'll give each other feedback. Um, but it's just, and eventually I, I hope that we do do like a comeback, even just a little reunion tour for Sugar Boom Boom, because we have so many fans that would just die to see that. So I hope we do, but we get along. We just haven't collabed in a long time. Okay. I can see y'all doing a remix for that song. Yep. Well, that's what the video is, is the remix. So we did a song, just us singing it in a tattoo shop. And that's the one that went super duper duper viral. No, when I mean um, remix, I'm talking about like a part two. I'm just ready. I mean, really? I'm just ready to. Because then you could um, be met. Or you could be. Um, we did a, I did a fentanyl awareness song. Oh, you did? Okay. You check that out. <laughs> I did it with uh, 22 Jacks did it and featured me on it, I should say. Yeah, that was super intense. That video, I also wrote the treatment for that video. And that one is super sad. So fentanyl is killing everybody out here, guys. You got that cinematic. So you got that cinematic uh, mind frame. That's why I, I know your videos are going to be phenomenal. When you really start yes. popping the bitches at, I have a feeling they're going to be phenomenal. Yep. And, you know, for the brick by brick video, that yellow brick road, I made that. That is a 60 foot yellow brick road that we for real moved around the city. I was going to ask you um, about that. Like, <laughs> is that what that was? 60 feet. Damn. And we put, you drew, drew every brick on there. Like people don't know how much work. I put into this stuff. So like, even at the show, we brought the yellow brick road to the show. I brought the mushrooms that we're using for the Alice in Wonderland video up onto the stage. Um, I did all the, the visuals for my show. I do all my flyers. I do, I do. It's a lot of work. Damn. Well, from gutter cane and serving it raw to lady dice, because you do so much <laughs> And I'm pretty sure, you know, not only your fans, but a lot of people will appreciate the work that you put into your 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 craft and your art. Thank you. We want to give you your flowers. Okay. <laughs> oh, she's got a pouty face. <laughs> now we want to give you your flowers. Uh, like I said, uh, not only for the things that you have accomplished, but the things that I know you're going to continue to do uh, in the art and the artistic freedom. That you're going to put into your to your work so i am excited to see where you continue to blossom and go well thank you and i want to give you your flowers because okay. you're amazing honestly like watching your interviews you're so great and you're so personal personal personable and i just i really appreciate everything you're doing and the fact that you reached out to me and care about anything that i have to say i just oh, really, really sure. appreciate it look this is this is a safe space for you so thanks anytime, yeah anytime uh you want to do another interview or you know keep us updated on your progress and everything that you're working on we can always tap in and and, and do another one and stuff like that uh would love that yeah 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 like i said you like we locked in and stuff like i, I like i said i've been a fan of everything that doc's been doing for a while so to see what he's doing with vz you and his frankie and stuff and just kind of I feel like he's more, I feel like Dr. And that's this much of his day. Like that is, okay, this much of his day. I don't know where the man gets the hours, the time, the energy. I don't, I, he is a superhuman. Yeah, I, I don't understand how he, you know, I thought I worked hard. <laughs> he's crazy. And he, he works for other people. Like he works to help the community. He helps the youth. He helps try and push our music. He helps, he's just. He's an, I always say he's an angel human. He really is. He's a pain in the ass too, but an angel human. Hey, y'all, you look, y'all are a perfect circle. <laughs> we are. Yeah. Y'all are perfect winning circle. And it's Frankie. He's so talented. I got to hang out with him a little bit more this past show, man. He's so talented. I'm just excited to see what we all do together. 
Yeah. I'm a, I'm gonna end up tapping in with is Frankie. I'm waiting for him to kind of put out a little bit more material. He's working on it too. Yep. Just so that but his can... set was great. He's a great performer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um yep. I, I talked to him through uh Facebook message, like me and me, we chopped it up a few times. And like I said, I just wanna I wanna make sure that when when we me and him do an interview together, people, the listeners and the viewers can really have something to be like, okay, this match the voice with his music, you know, and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And that's why I'm like, until then, we'll just keep dropping seeds for him. So when it happens, you know, because I definitely want to shout him out, but I do get what you're saying. He's going to go crazy as soon as he takes off running. I already know. Already. And his, his content is so different. And he's he's such a, he has very heartfelt content. Well, I want to tell he loves his mama more. Huh? I want to hear you and VZ more. I know you don't even know. You don't even know. Yes. I just want to put that out there. Uh, it's going to be so good. Um, and just totally different vibes again, like not anything like lion's den. We, we have one that's like way more hype and then two like sexy ones. Um, yeah, it's going to be so much fun. And I just shout out to him too. Cause he really does. He brings a completely different artist out of me. Not many artists intimidate me. He does in the best way. Oh, really? You also have merch as well. But yeah. <laughs> but uh, let people know how they can reach out to you, Instagram and the merch that you have and everything. Yes. So DiceyNT.com, you can go there and the store is right there on it. You can follow me, um, Lady Dice 1790 on Instagram, Lady Dice on Facebook, on YouTube, Spotify all the shit. There's a lot of really cute merch stuff. And we're getting ready to drop some more specific to the music video that just dropped and, and all of that. So I'm really excited to share that stuff with you guys very, very soon. All righty. Well, hey, thank you for taking the time to interview me, sit down with me and chop it up. We would definitely, definitely do this again. Uh, I want to thank your fans. My own fans, if I have any. <laughs> you do. Uh, I'm your fan. Oh, thank you. See? Boom. <laughs> but I would yeah. yeah. <laughs> do the millennial hearts. Kids nowadays do some crazy shit like that. I, know. I think. I know, yeah, I saw that. I was like, Have you seen this one? Boom. I guess my nails are long. That's supposed to be a little heart. Oh, damn. Apparently. And that's what my kids told me. I'm like, what? Yeah, I never seen that one for I might have to keep that in yeah. mind. Well, though. Now you have. Look at <laughs> <laughs> But, hey, I want to thank the listeners and the viewers for checking us out today and, uh, and uh, tapping in to the podcast that is so raw that you could practically OD. I want everybody to have a safe week. Thank you, Gutta Kane. Thank you, Serving It Raw. It's been an honor. Can't wait till next time. Yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. We are out of here. Uh, just make sure to coke fire. Told the jeweler cut some links and bring the gold higher. 